Hello, my dear students. Again, I am starting a new video. Excreted product and their elimination. This is a very important chapter. You see the preview. What particular things today I am going to teach you. So today I am going to <coughs> explain excreted product and their elimination. This is the preview just. Yes. Then the types of excretion, then flame cell or protonephridia, nephridia, malpighia and tubules, kidney, then the human excretory system, structure of kidneys, internal internal structure of kidney, nephron, types of nephron, functional structure of the glomerular membrane then the internal structure and reabsorption urine formation counter current mechanism micturition regulation of kidney function disorders of excretory system uremia renal calculi glomerulonephritis hemodialysis up to this and one extra topic that means the kidney transplantation this is the last topic up to this i will today i will explain in addition i will explain the whole mechanism with the help of blackboard so let us study start excretory product and their elimination first is types of excretion so Excretion is the elimination of metabolic waste like ammonia, urea, uric acid, etc. from the tissues. Types of excretion, amnotelism, urotelism and uricotelism. Amnotelism we are found in mostly the fishes. You see in the diagram, urotelism that is we, uh, that is mammals and frogs, aquatic and semi-aquatic reptiles like alligators, turtle, mammals, etc. And uricotelism that is somewhat in between. This is found in insects, some land crustaceans, land snails terrestrial reptiles and birds so step by step i am explaining first is the protonephridia or flame cell this protonephridium or flame cells are certain excretory organs in animals some extra points i am telling about the Amonotelic animals that is these are aquatic invertebrates like aquatic invertebrates means aquatic insects some bony fishes aquatic amphibians etc ammonia nh3 is highly toxic so excretion needs excess of water since they are staying in water therefore they are using maximum water and ammonia is readily soluble in water and is excreted by diffusion through body surface or gill surface mostly we are found in the fishes these are excreted as the ammonium ions whenever it will mix with water it will form ammonium hydroxide ammonium chloride like this different types of salts and ultimately excreted from the body try to remember this is the ammonotelic animals i am explaining somewhat uh, elaborately and kidneys do not play any significant role in the removal of ammonia next is the urotelism urotelism is the main thing because uh, i have told earlier also that is urotelism we are found only mo mostly in case of mammals urotelism that is in liver in case us that means in case of human being ammonia is converted into less toxic urea try to remember urea 
our main excretory product is urea so it need only moderate quantity of water for excretion some amount of urea may be retained in the kidney matrix of some animals to maintain a desired osmolarity urocotylism so process of excretion uric acid it is the uh, actually uric acid is water soluble water insoluble and it is less toxic so water is not needed for excretion try to remember water is not needed for excretion in case of urocotylism and they are excreting the excreta with less water like birds you just think about birds insects some land crustaceans land snails uh, terrestrial reptiles and birds you just think about the birds birds they are flying very high for a very long time they cannot get any water in the sky so they have to take water whenever they will come in the land therefore they takes very less amount of water or very frequent very less frequent they will take the water next uh, we are that thus they are performing excretion the process is called urocotylism or urocotelic excretion and the organisms are termed as urocotylism next i am explaining some excretory organs in animals so first of all protonephridia that is another name is the flame cell it is found in flatworms rotifers some annelids and cephalopod and cephalocordates cephalocordates means head and their body is subdivided into head and thorax cephalon and that means mainly cephalon region or the head is present so and they are protonephridia so protonephridia are primarily for osmoregulation next is the nephridia nephridia is present in annelids annelids might means uh, that means worms which annules annules means rings the bodies whose uh, whole body is made up of a number of rings annelids is earthworm then leech so you just see in the in the diagram each and every segment possess this nephridia in annelids it help in removal of nitrogenous waste products and osmoregulation with the help of nephridia next you see this is the another ex next example is malpighian tubules malpighian tubules in the larger larger diagram you see malpighian tubules it is present just near the gut gut means that means that near the stomach after the stomach there you will see some finger like projections these are the malpighian tubules these finger like projections that is uh, attached with the with, with their guards and one side is blunt that is one side is blind blind means this is uh, closed and this side is open so this is performing the function of excretion this is the primitive type of nephron and this is mainly uh, found in insects next is the green glands this is the green glands or antennal antennal glands or green glands so this specific structure is found in the prawn if you see the prawn a lobster probably you have seen and we are using as our food it is the uh, coming under arthropoda so crustaceans prawns that is are coming under this group and their green glands is used as the excretion then the final one is the kidney kidney is the resp is maintaining the osmoregulation for the higher organisms next i am coming step by step actually kidney i will explain uh, elaborately so i am now, now not coming in this section next come to our human excretory system so human excretory system is mainly made up of kidney 
I'll uh, take the help of uh, the blackboard for elaborate explanation of the uh, function of nephron. Now we just try to remember. So human excretory system is made up of kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. Although here urinary bladder I have not shown. Uh, <coughs> and then the kidney is reddish brown. bean shaped structure situated between the levels of last thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae you just see the earlier slide where is the kidney situated kidney is situated in the backward part of our body just you see just be below the thorax and here lumbar thorax and lumbar that means these kidneys are protected very nicely in the bone case half of the bone case and here also uh, that means some uh, lumbar bones are there and lumbar bone has some extension with the help of this extension these are present in a very um, in in a space where it is uh, where uh, it is very safe very safe place it is placed so uh, length of the kidney are 10 to 12 cm wide is 5 to 7 cm thickness is 2 to 3 cm average weight is 120 to 170 g on the concave side of kidney there is an opening which is called hilum through which blood vessels or nerves so here you see this is the hilum here hilum i am next drawing here this is the hilum through which here i have uh, shown the total structure and and the hilum is there through which blood vessels nerve lymphatic ducts and ureter enters the kidney hilum leads a funnel shaped cavity called renal pelvis with projections called calyx or calices in the plural it is called the calices medulla has few conical projections called medullary pyramids or renal pyramids projecting into the calices next you see about the nephron nephrons are the structural and functional units of kidney each nephron has two parts glomerulus and renal tubules so here you see this is the glomerulus and renal tub tubules so this is the glomerulus and the renal tubules so i am explaining about the glomerulus a tuft of capillary formed by efferent arteries a fine branch of renal artery and blood from glomerulus is carried away by efferent arterioles about these things i will uh, i have to take the help of the help of the blackboard please come to the blackboard now you see this is i've drawn for you <coughs> this is the bowman's capsule and here about this internal structure i'll show in the slide so this is efferent arteriole efferent arteriole that is blood is coming by the renal artery here try to remember main important thing renal artery and renal vein this is the renal vein so just you see renal artery you try to remember renal artery is carrying blood pure in the context of oxygen that is it is oxygenated blood first of all try to remember oxygenated blood in the context of oxygen and carbon dioxide that is oxygenated blood that is pure blood because artery carries pure blood but it is impure in the context of nwp that is the nitrogenous waste product it is full of nitrogenous waste product but oxygenated blood so it is coming here and entering in the glomerulus this is called the glomerulus here the network of the structures 
this is the glomerulus and this is the glomerulus and here this is the Baumann's capsule so Baumann's capsule here ultra filtration is occurring which is termed as the dialysis ultra filtration interesting fact is that our blood is colloidal in nature blood is colloidal in nature but nitrogenous waste product they are crystalloid that is they are smaller than the colloid that is crystalloids form true solution just like sugar solution or salt solution these are colorless sugar solution or salt solution is colorless but blood and milk these are a comprise of color that is the particles in blood and particles in milk they cannot hide themselves in between the water molecules about these things you have studied in chemistry so i am not going more so blood is colloidal solution but the nitrogenous waste product like ammonia urea uric acid these are these are the forming the true solutions and this true solution will separate it here but blood will not separate it is blood or milk that is blood in case of here blood is present here but the ammonia urea uric acid these solutions are coming in the this chamber with sodium chloride potassium chloride all the salt all the salts also coming then what happens here the blood is coming that is called the efferent arteriole through the efferent arteriole pure blood in the context of nitrogenous waste product this blood is without any nitrogenous waste product but main thing you just think <coughs> with this blood there is our required things required things like sodium chloride potassium chloride mainly sodium chloride is also coming and other nutrients are also coming that means again this water and minerals have to be have to be absorbed about these things i will um, explain next topic now just think since it is a very long this color actually here blood is coming and through here urine is coming maximum amount of water again absorbed or reabsorbed and it has been calculated that 99 percent of water is absorbed our kidney is filtering or preparing urine 180 liters in 24 hours and just 1% will excrete that means 1.5 to 1.8 liters just you think about the 1% means out of 180 liters 1% means only 1.8 liters of urines are we are excreting that is and others 99% water reabsorbed 180 liter means just like a large tank of syntax tank or like that large tank one rate just 200 liter tanks are available or just drums are there so much urines are formed that is so much urines are formed but the 99 percent are reabsorbed then what happens this is actually i have drawn smaller and this is actually large very large very large therefore these are also made up of cells so here respiration is occurring in the each and every cell of this vasa recta that is the no, vessels which carries blood then what happens this vasa recta and this one is so large and this ultimately in the cells of this tube they will perform respiration and then ultimately oxygen will change to carbon dioxide therefore whenever by renal vein this is the renal vein renal vein why it is when renal vein is carrying blood which is pure in the context of nitrogenous waste product there is no nitrogenous waste product but it is deoxygenated blood so deoxygenated blood and without any nitrogenous waste product ultimately it will go to the heart and then for the recirculation or for the next next cycle next here you see Henle's loop that is descending limb this is the descending limb of the Henle's loop this is the ascending limb and ultimately both of these limb together forming the Henle's loop 
then here you see these are the other just these are the other cut portion of this dct first part is called the pct or the proximal convoluted tubules and this is the distal convoluted tubule this is the starting of the convoluted tubules this is the ending position of the convoluted tubules ultimately a number of neurons they are mixing up with the collecting duct and ultimately they are going to the urinary bladder next you come to the slide next you come to the types of nephron nephron are two types of nephron cortical nephron and juxta medullary nephron cortical nephron is 85 percent whereas juxta medullary nephron is 18 percent so cortical nephron you see in this the henley's loop is very short here you should just see in this side the henley's loop is very small and here is the henley's loop is very large so <coughs> So in uh, cortical nephron, the Henle's loop is short and extends only very little into medulla. Vasa recta is absent or highly reduced. In juxta medullary, in this case, here you see juxta medullary nephron 15 percent. In this, Henle's loop is long and turns deep into medulla. Vasa recta in this case it is present. So next you see about the urine formation or physiology of kidney. So three processes glomerular filtration, reabsorption and secretion. Glomerular filtration, reabsorption and secretion 1, 2, 3 this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. 1, 2 and 3. So glomerular filtration here then tubular reabsorption in this position, in this area and then tubular secretion in this area these are the three parts where the main urine formation takes place so ultrafiltration how ultrafiltration is occurring you see i am showing the glomerular capillary blood they will give pressure causes filtration of blood through three layers endothelium of glomerular blood vessels epithelium of Bowman's capsule and a basement membrane between these two the epithelial cells which is termed as podocytes of the Bowman's capsule are arranged in an intricate manner leaving some minute space called filtration slits or slit pore you just see these are the slit pores so these three these slit pores almost all constituents of the blood plasma except the proteins pass into the lumen of the mammoth capsule just about think about 1100 to 1200 ml of blood is filtered by the kidneys per minute and it is constitutes about one fifth of the blood pumped out by each ventricle of the heart in a minute and out of this 1100 or 1200 ml glomerular filtration occur 180 that is glomerular filtration is just the 180 ml uh, 125 ml per minute 125 ml per minute that is as i have told earlier 180 liters per day just you think 125 ml per minute of urine is formed if we will calculate it in 24 hours then 180 liters of urine is formed in one day so Next you just think about that the next about just next just about the reabsorption 180 liters of glomerular filtration or occurs therefore just as I have told 180 liters of glomerular filtrate is produced daily 
but only 99 per 99 percent is reabsorbed by renal tubules so normally formed only 1.5 to 1.8 liters of urine concentrated urine are formed in our uh, every day that means each and every day we are uh, excreting 100 uh, that means 1.5 to 1.8 liters of urine you just try to remember because several times i am telling the same uh, number in loop of henley minimum reabsorption takes place it maintains high osmolarity of medullary intestinal fluid collecting duct extends from cortex to inner parts of medulla it reabsorbs large amount of water to concentrate urine it also allows passage of small amounts of urea into medullary interstitials and they keep the osmolarity constant next about the tubular secretion you just think about the tubular secretion cells of pct and dct proximal convolutal tubule and distal convolutal tubule maintain ionic that means sodium potassium balance as i have told earlier sodium and potassium balance that is acid base balance or ph of the body fluid by selective secretion of hydrogen positive ion potassium positive ion and ammonia into the into the into the filtrate next just you think about the how mechanism of concentration of filtrate this is the very important thing which is also termed as the counter current effect in this two diagram you just see that is urine is coming in this way and blood concentration of urine is increasing in this way concentration of blood is increasing this way just use you may see the arrows here arrows is coming from this portion to this portion but here arrows is coming from this portion to this portion so henley's loop and vasa recta help to concentrate the urine the flow of filtrate in the two limbs of henley's loop and the flow of blood through the two limbs of vasa recta are in opposite direction therefore it is called counter current pattern so try to remember about the counter current pattern i am not going uh, more details about the counter current because uh, otherwise the video will be very large if you have any um, confusion then you please tell me next is the micturition actually micturition is totally controlled by our <coughs> brain So just think about the micturition, it is a gradual filling of urinary bladder causes stretching in our bladder. As a result, stretch receptors of its wall send impulses in CNS, that is central nervous system. The central nervous system passes on motor messages. It causes the contraction of smooth muscles of the bladder and simultaneously relaxation of the urethral sphincter it results in micturition or releases of urine another thing that is the various uh, parameters in urine will give us a number of clinical diagnosis next i am going to the regulation of kidney function it is very important most of the uh, regulation is done by the hormones and it is also called hormonal feedback mechanism so when body fluid level decreases the osmo receptors stimulates hypothalamus of the brain just you think hypothalamus of the um, brain to release antidiuretic hormone ADH antidiuretic hormone 
it stimulates water reabsorption from dct first of the gasta glomerular uh, so uh, dct that is the reabsorption from the distal convoluted tubule tubules and collecting duct thus adh prevents diuresis and increases body fluid volumes increase in fluid volume switches of the osmo receptors and suppresses adh release to complete the feedback so regulation by j g a that is renin angiotensin mechanism jga full form is juxta glomerular apparatus you just see the first one is the j j g a juxta glomerular apparatus which is the which is sensitive region formed a cellular modification of the dct that is the distal convoluted tubules and the efferent arterioles at the location of their contact so jga regulates the gfr that is the glomerular filtration rate main is the jga is the as i have explained earlier about the glomerular filtration rate that means per minute how much filtration is occurring so a fall of glomerular blood flow that is gfr glomerular filtration rate rate activities will control and ultimately it will release renin renin you just see renin so renin converts angiotensinogen you just see renin converts angiotensinogen as i have explained in my earlier videos also gen means generator like hydrogen is water generator oxygen is oxide generator so angiotensinogen is produced in angiotensin and then this angiotensin will increase blood blood pressure in the glands then pct absorbs more water and salt ultimately stimulate the adrenal so then ultimately stimulant of adrenal gland and then dct will dilate and water will come out and the ultimately the regulation of the fluids takes place next i am explaining some disorders of excretory systems uremia so renal failure are called uremia renal failure can progress from mild to maximum renal failure are occur due to the when renal function or kidney function is less than 5% that is the renal calculi renal calculi is some stones are formed in stroma or bladder or ureter and these stones are formed due to the calcium carbonate deposition these things have to be operated and uh, from the kidney otherwise the urine cannot form or filtration of the blood cannot form another is the glomerulo nephritis nephritis means some inactivation of certain nephrons and ultimately it is also creates problem to the urine system or urinary system so whenever our kidney is not functioning then we will perform the hemodialysis that is artificial kidney so in patients with uremia urea is removed by hemodialysis the dialysis or dialyzing unit or the artificial kidney contains a coiled cellophane tube surrounded by dialyzing fluid we just see the dialyzing fluid means the dialyzing fluid this one the dialyzing fluids which is the actual distilled water and here urine is urine or the excretory product are collecting this is the mainly filter or the ultra filter or dialy or dialyzer by which the blood is coming and blood is filtered and after filtration nitrogenous waste product is and um, nitrogenous waste product here deposited so this is the called hemodialysis next is the kidney transplantation 
if the uh, patient or the person kidney is not working both the kidney is not working then another donor will give one kidney and this one will bypass just think all two kidneys are there and another kidney is attached with the with another uh, ducts and joined with the blood vessels and ultimately this will come to the bladder so this is the kidney transplantation so about these things we have discussed nicely so up to this uh, your our chapter is finished and now again i am going to what things we have discussed so we have discussed today the excretory product and their elimination types of excretion then the flame cell proton nephridia nephridia malpigian tubules antenna or green glands kidneys human excretory system structure of kidney internal structure of kidney nephron types of nephron functional unit or the glomerular membrane glomerular filtration reabsorption and tubular secretion urine formation counter current mechanism micturition regulation of kidney function disorders like uremia renal calculi glomerulonephritis hemodialysis and kidney transplant so probably you are clear about this chapter if any confusion is there then you please call me and if you like my channel please subscribe it and then you will get the new notification of the new videos i have tried for uh, you to understand clearly and easily and i have explained very slowly also so you try to remember nicely okay all the best